Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We are thrilled to have so many of you with us this morning. Today we celebrate the affirmation of the baptism of five of our young people. Um, because the service will be a little bit different, I have a few announcements about how things will go. Um, so bear with me as we get through them. Uh, the service, the celebration of the affirmation of baptism today will take place after our hymn of the day. Um, the page number can be found in the bulletin. And um, it will also be, our entire service will be on the screen as well. Um, uh, with our affirmation of baptism, our young people have spent about two years studying with us, um, learning to take hold of their, um, the promises their parents made for them at baptism and grow with that on their own. Uh, in the, your bulletin, you'll find an insert with their names, a verse that they have chosen for themselves this day, and then some information um, about what they have been doing in our service. Um, I will note, for those of you who are visiting with us today, you are invited to commune with us and with our confirmands. Um, we ask simply that you believe that the presence of Jesus is with us through the body and the blood. And for our younger people, we ask that you've had some sort of instruction at your home congregation. Um, as you come forward, we do have gluten-free wafers available. You can let the person with the, um, with the bread know that you need gluten-free. We also have juice available um, in the center of the trays, that is the lighter color liquid, and the wine is um, outside. Um, otherwise, if you are not either old enough to commune or you do not feel like you can take communion with us, you are welcome to come forward for a blessing. And if that is the case, just place your hands behind you, um, and our people doing communion will give you a blessing. Um, for those of you, again, who are visiting with us today, you will note in our bulletin things are labeled either ELW or WOV. Those are our two hymnals. Um, again, the entire service is up on the screen, so you can follow along that way. But if you like to have music for your hymns or you like to hold a book, the ELW is the red hymnal found in front of you. The uh, WOV is the blue hymnal where most of our service will come from today. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out is our hymn of the day today is one we have sung at some point in the past. It may not be as familiar, so you may want your hymnal, uh, but I wanted to point out when we get to that point, we sing verse 1 and then verse 2 and then the chorus or the refrain and then go from there. Um, so just note it is written in there, but it's kind of tiny, so you have to um, watch. And again, on the screen, it will go in that order. Uh, the last thing about the service, or about the, today that I'd like to note, is when the service is over, our confirmands will be along the back wall with us um, to shake your hands and, and greet you for today. Then you are all invited to head out to our parish hall and have a seat. Um, once everyone's gone through the line, our confirmands will come out. If you'd like to take pictures with them, um, they, they have cookies and cupcakes to celebrate with, and they have cookies with their names on them. Um, we will take pictures, we'll have a prayer, and then we'll have a reception with one another. Um, so please do join us for that afterwards. Um, oh, and I will note, during the confirmation service, you are invited to take photos. I ask only that you don't have a flash on and that you stay in one place. Um, I know that same seems strange, but I have been in congregations where people actually, you know, are darting back and forth. So if you would just make sure your flash is not on and you stay in one area. Um, I think that's all I have for the service. Do you have anything about the service? Okay. Uh, the only other announcement I have is uh, we do have an addition or an update to our prayer list. Um, Ella Brake, Mike and uh, Mike's mother, uh, died this past week, and they did have her funeral yesterday. Um, so we pray for their family in this time of grief. Um, are there any other announcements this morning or updates or additions for the prayer list? Honey. Just one more note on the hymns on the hymn board. 744 has a little blue dot beside it. That means it's out of the blue book, WOV. And there are three communion hymns listed 744, 781, 512. If we don't need them all, we won't use them all, so it may be that we skip down again. And that 744 is Nolan and his family's request for him. So we come to that time. Yes, Rick. Yeah, we have another wheelchair ramp to build. That'll be uh, over at Gilman. 
but we're going to meet at my brother Bob Lesner's house that's three and a half miles north of town, 15, 1849 north. At 8 a.m., that'll be number 38. It's for Laurel Schmoey. She has stage four cancer and needs a wheelchair ramp. That is on Thursday at 8 a.m. This Thursday. And I have it written on my prayer list last week and forgot to add her to the bulletin. So we, yes, Laura will also be on our prayer Are there any others? All right, then our worship service this morning begins with our brief confession for order and forgiveness. It can be found on page 10 in the very front of your blue hymnal or on the screen. I ask that you please stand as you are able. We begin our worship service as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. I see how extremely religious you are in every way. 
For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, and he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far away from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of you, your own poets, have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Because he has fixed the day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Here ends the first reading. <coughs>
Today's psalm comes from Psalm 66. we we'll read responsibly by whole verse. It's found in your insert on the screen. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living, and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the death. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. Here, Lena, hear it? <laughs> 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 Alright, 
the giant left. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but somebody, sometime, got up on a giant ladder. I, I always like, I envision them driving a big cherry picker in here. Because those are really high. But somebody has changed those lights, right? Did you see any? Did you see them do it? No. You, did you, you saw somebody change that? I have never, in all of the years that I have been here, I know the lights go out. And I may know the person who has changed them, but I have never seen them do it. Yeah. Right? Well, different people, a lot of times it's the council. Okay. See that guy right back there? Larry? I know he's done it a lot. More power to him. I want to be up that high. Right? And I shouldn't be up that high. And especially with great students. <laughs> but, right? But that happens. Right? It's, it's, is the floor clean? Somebody vacuumed it. Are the windows still dusted off? Somebody did that. I don't is know. communion there for Sunday? I don't know. Somebody did that, right? I don't know. You don't know. You can see it. Right? There are people at work in this church doing things that we don't always see. But they happen. Sometimes we see them, sometimes we don't. Today in the gospel, the disciples are really worried because Jesus whom they have seen, whom they have walked beside and could poke if they wanted to, they have watched him do miracles. They have watched him answer questions. They have watched him help them out. And now he's been talking about the fact that he won't be around anymore. And they're very scared. What happens if all the lights go out, Jesus? What happens in this? What happens in that? What happens in that? And so today, it would be dark, but so today Jesus tells them, even when I go, I will leave behind another. The Holy Spirit, who you may not be able to see and go with, but who will be with you, who will guide you, who will make sure all of those things that you worry about getting done, get done. Who will be with you when it feels dark and when you feel lost, and who will be with you when you are happy and celebrate Today, when these five people over here in these red robes come up front, they're going to say a lot of things, we're going to say a lot of things, but one of the things we're going to do for them is we are going to pray that the Holy Spirit be stirred within them. Right? That they be reminded that there is someone always at work in their lives, even when they can't see it, when they can't touch it. When they don't feel it like they do sometimes. That they are reminded that they have been prayed for and the Holy Spirit has been sent to them by Jesus. Right? Somebody is always at work, whether we see the job get done or not. The Spirit is always with us. Always calling to us. Always talking to us. Always helping us. That is the promise that we all receive today in the Gospel. Right? That the work is being done. And we can trust that it continues to be done in us. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God, we thank you that you sent your spirit to be with us. Someone to watch over us, to guide us, to walk through life with us, even when we can't see the spirit. We know that it is a work in us. We thank you for this wonderful gift. In your name we pray. <coughs> Elena, I'll catch you after church to get that changed. <laughs>
that neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. That is Jesus' prayer 
and his promise over his beloved ones. That is his love for his family. And as joyous as we all are for you today, we also feel a little anxious. Moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandmas, don't we feel a little worried? You all are growing up. You used to be this little. Now you're looking me in the eye and somewhat beyond. These years will be filled with some of the hardest decisions you have ever faced. The evils in this world push and pull very hard at you young people. You'll be faced with trials and temptations and decisions in these coming years, and we are scared for you. Because we remember facing them. We remember the good and the bad that we chose. And we know of loved ones who struggled and lost or who struggles still. So we fear for your growth as well. What will your futures hold? And so today, we pray over you, not just for your sakes, but for our sakes as well. For us to know the Spirit of God rests upon you, within you, calls you to seek a healthier and a holier path, and to protect you are out of our reach. That's our prayer over you today. That is our love for our family. And people of God, today is a reminder for you as well. We have prayed over one another. We will continue to pray for one another. That is our family. This is our love. A love that transcends the bloodlines, the friendships. Sometimes it transcends even the fact that we don't like each other that well. We are a family. We are gathered today and each week to be with one another, to support one another, to pray for one another, and to let the Holy Spirit wash over us as well. We are part of the promised Holy Spirit given love from our Lord, and we are prayed for by the family that surrounds us. The Compromands would, hopefully, be able to tell you what I have told them time and again. Being a part of a church family is so important, because here is where you should always find welcome. Here is where you should always be loved. Here is where you should find a place unlike any other one out in the world, where people care about who you are, how you truly are, and how they can be a part of that life, uplifting you in sorrow, celebrating with you in joy, and walking with you in all times. I know it's not always perfect, but I haven't yet met a family that is. But overall, here is where you will hear time and again that you are loved. Not just by us. Because we can get lost and we can get confused and as parents we can get angry. But here you will hear time and again that you are loved by God. Always by God. So much by God, unbelievably by God, are you loved. Here is where the Spirit will fill you up to meet another week. Here is where God will carry you when you are weak. Here is where the Spirit will dance with you when you are strong. Here is family. Here is love. No matter what. Nolan, Lily, Reagan, Leah, Haley, Reagan, from today on, in this gathering, you will, by the church, be considered adults in your faith. Truly, adults in your faith, you stand today to promise to do your best to live up to that responsibility. 
And I can tell you that that means starting to attend annual meetings. That's right, annual meetings. To give us your own money into the offering plate for Sunday school. Your own money. Notice that you are now on the greeter list and have a job at certain times, or a million other things that get carried out in this building. And by the way, it does mean all those things. But more importantly today, you stand to accept not only the responsibility of your own faith, but to notice and care for your family. I've seen you all step up lately to care for the building and your cleaning jobs. I've enjoyed working with you as you found different places in the leadership of our worship. But now I challenge you to look beyond yourselves and see a family who has prayed over you since birth and begin to truly care for them. We are family. Here is the promise of love. So far, mainly love you've got, but also now love in return. Feel the spirit stir within you. Know that you are loved and let Jesus show his love through you. We are being moved by the spirit together today. We are growing blessed by the promise of the Holy Spirit's presence. Today we will be shown again how that we have patience and care for one another. In hope and guidance, we care for those younger than us. In attention and tending of those older than us. And in our knowledge of love that God has for each of us. He has made us family. And he has given us his love. These young people are in your care. They are entrusted to you by God. They are made a part of our family through Jesus' love for all of his children. So I ask you when they stand here today and always pray for them. Not just because they're teenagers. Pray for them. Because you know the challenges they will face in this life. And you want the best for them. Watch them. See the Holy Spirit live within them as you've seen the good gifts they have brought to this church. Encourage them to keep the faith, to use the gifts God has given them, even when they walk away and go off somewhere. Be patient and love them, as you yourselves sometimes drive other people crazy. Show them that they are a beloved part of this family, this community. As we have all longed to feel a place where we are loved and needed, where we belong. And remember, all of us, remember that first and foremost, we are the children of God. From the moment of our birth, we are never alone. We are never orphaned. We are never without the one who created us, who loves us who makes us one in this time and place, in every time and place. Today we not only have joy, we are joy. We are love. We are the family of God. Amen.
We give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people. One, with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. I present Nolan Adam Pollard, Lily Margaret Curtis, God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers, whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have given, who you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I ask the entire congregation do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? To serve all people, following the example of Jesus? And to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Nolan Allen Pollard the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Lily Margaret Gertis the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, Cleanse us from all sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Reagan May Vaughan the gift of your Holy Spirit, 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Leah Hope Walter the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> we give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Haley Deanna Walter the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and light, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. <coughs> People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We do. We ask God to love and guide us. I have this in the wrong order, so I say I keep scrolling. Um, okay, let's go. All right. Um,
Don, Dorothy, Lori, Pat, Melissa, Tim, Pat, Pauline, Steve, Pam, Mark, Ed, Marcia, Braden, Robert, Merv, Scott, Laurel, and the Brady family. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died, especially remember those who have guided our confirmants on their faith journeys. Inspire us all by the witness of your saints to your love. Bring us into your eternal presence to live with you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Join our voices with your faithful ones at every time and every place. We offer our prayers in the name of the Risen One, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we continue with our communion service, found on page 36 or on the screen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
see the blessing of the table. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Holy Spirit. 